Turn with me, if you would, to Amos chapter 1, verse 13. Hopefully you're already there. It says, Thus says the Lord, For three transgressions of the people of Ammon, and for four I will not turn away its punishment, because they ripped open pregnant women in Gilead, that they might enlarge their territory. Now again, there's that common Hebraism, for three transgressions and for four. And by now, you should know what that means. It means that Ammon was guilty of multiple sins. And these sins had filled the cup of God's wrath up to the brim. But this last sin, this fourth sin, had caused the cup of God's wrath to overflow. And now that it was overflowing, God's judgment could not be stopped. So what was the fourth sin that caused God's cup of wrath to overflow? Well, they ripped open pregnant women with swords. In other words, they murdered children in utero while they were still in the womb. Small raiding parties would come into the Israelite territory and they would look for isolated families. It's no different today. You might not know this, but if you ever go to Israel, you'll notice something very peculiar. You will never see homes all by themselves out in the country. You don't see that at all in Israel. If you do, it's Palestinians, it's not Israelites. It is against the law to live by yourself in the country. Does anyone know why? Terrorism. One of the things that will happen is terrorists will come and if you live by yourself, they'll sneak up in your house, they'll kill you, they'll move on to the next home, they'll do the very same thing. So this goes all the way back to the Ammonites. The Ammonites would come in these small raiding parties into Israelite territory and they would look for isolated families or they would look for groups of women with no men around because the men were out working in the fields. And they would steal and they would destroy property but if any of the women were pregnant they would cut them open with their swords and they would pull the babies out. In fact there are There are writings in ancient times that describe this. So we know this isn't just something that the Bible's talking about, but we don't have any proof of this. There is proof of them doing this. Now, people, this was strictly an act of terror. They were trying to get these three tribes of Israel who lived along the border to pull back to a more secure region so that they could occupy the land. But to God, what they were doing was inexcusable. You see, infanticide is an abomination to God. But to murder an innocent child while it's still in the womb, well, it causes the cup of God's wrath to overflow. And it won't be stopped. Now, how in the world could the Ammonites do such a thing? You know, when you think about it, this was common for them. If they found a woman who was pregnant, the very first thing that they did is they ran that woman down, they held her down, they took a a knife or a sword, they slit the the belly open, they pulled out the baby and they left the baby there and the woman and she would bleed to death and along with the baby. And when you came home, you would see your wife and there she was and then there was the fetus laying by its side dead. So how in the world could they do such a thing? Well, the truth is they were desensitized to infanticide because of the way they worshipped. They believed that by sacrificing their firstborn sons to the god Molech, it ensured financial prosperity to the family and to their future children. Now, let me show you a picture of an idol of the god Molech and then explain how they sacrificed their children. Here's a picture of an idol of Molech, and we're going to leave it up for a while because I want you to notice. Actually, this is the statue of a man with the head of an oxen, but the hands are out here. Now what this is showing is a baby, but that's not a good picture because actually these idols would be about eight to nine foot tall. Sometimes they were taller, but the reason they were taller is because they had this wide base. And if you notice this, this is wood and inside is a fire. So you had this big base and it was hollow inside and inside of it, what you would do is you would build a very big fire. And when it turned this idol cherry red, they would then lay the newborn baby into the arms of the idol while they were beating drums. And the reason they would beat these drums and they would begin to chant is they wanted to drown out the screams of the child. But also they were chanting this worship and this praise to this god Molech. And then the baby would roll down the arms and there was a little hole where it would roll down and it would fall directly into the fire. And the mother was not allowed to shed a tear because if she shed a tear, then the financial prosperity that was promised to her family and to her future children would not come and she sacrificed her child in vain. 
So it was common for them to lead the chant and to sing praises. And you know what's kind of interesting? We see this happening even in the Middle East today. We see mothers of Muslim sons who want their sons to be martyrs. And they do the very same thing. They won't shed a tear. In fact, in fact, they think that it's very glorious because if their son's a martyr, not only will they go immediately to paradise, but they'll also get to bring their family. And as a result of that, they're willing to sacrifice them. So from a very young age, they begin to teach, and to teach them to be a martyr. But it starts all the way back here, and this is what they would do at that time. Now, of course, for the Israelites, this was strictly forbidden by God in the Torah. Look at Leviticus chapter 18, verse 21. It says, do not permit any of your children to be offered as a sacrifice to Molech. For you must not bring shame on the name of your God. I am the Lord. In other words, I am your God. I am the redeeming, covenant-keeping God. I do not accept those type of sacrifices. Now, there are those that will say, well, didn't God expect Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac? Well, you need to understand something. This was a test. And the reason it was a test is because God wanted to see if Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son for him. Now you need to realize that when Abraham was intending to do this, it was with the faith that God would resurrect him if he did this. And the reason he had to have faith is because God told him that through Isaac, he's the promised child. He is the child that was given supernaturally. If you remember... Abraham's wife was past the childbearing years. She had already reached the age of menopause and had gone several years beyond that. Her body was dead, and yet she conceived and she had this child, and God said, through Isaac, these promises will come upon you. So he was the child to promise. So when God said, I want you to sacrifice your son, your only son, talking about the child of promise, to me, Abraham had faith because he believed that God would fulfill the promise that if he did this, Isaac would be resurrected. Now, of course, we know the story. God said no at the very last moment. He provided a substitute, which was the ram. But here's why he wanted to see if he would do this. He wanted to see if he was willing to offer his son as a sacrifice for God because God was going to be willing to offer his son as a sacrifice for us. Now, people, that's the only time that God has ever expected or wanted a human sacrifice. And then, even then, he he did not want it, did not allow it. The only time he ever allowed is when he allowed his son to be a sacrifice for us because of the covenant that was necessary. He was made our sin that we might be the righteousness of God in him, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. But you need to understand something. Human sacrifice is and was an abomination to God. If you were raised in a culture that practiced child sacrifice, you would become desensitized to infanticide. That means to to kill the children. But just imagine if you were raised in in an environment that sacrificed children, that would just be a part of who you are, just a part of your culture. But to God, the killing of children is an abomination, especially, especially, The killing of children in the womb. But people, I want you to understand something. We are guilty of the very same thing here in America. Because that's what abortion is. Now, I don't want to come in and and to condemn anyone. God is a God of grace. And there's not a sin that a person can commit that God won't forgive. But the problem is... Churches today and pastors today are not teaching the truth. You need to understand the killing of children in the womb, abortion, is an abomination to God. And it's not a sin that fills the cup of God's wrath to the brim. It's a sin that causes the cup of God's wrath to overflow and for judgment to come. 